I've suffered and been uncomfortable on a lot of backpacking trips as I'm sure a lot of you have as well, but it doesn't have to be that way. Whether it's sore feet at the end of the day, not being able to fall asleep on an uncomfortable sleeping pad, or any number of things that might be keeping you from really enjoying your backpacking trips, today I have you covered with an ultra comfort backpacking gear list. I've carefully picked the gear for every aspect of a backpacking trip in order to keep you smiling and comfortable out on trail. Normally I start with talking about the pack, but with this pack, the new 2023 REI Flash 55, it's a lot easier to show you all the awesome features it has as we unpack it. And it starts with the water bottle pockets. So REI does something really unique with the Flash 55 pack, and that's that they put a separate water bottle pocket in front of the side pocket. If you have ever had troubles trying to reach back and grab your water bottle from the side pocket, this pack is gonna solve that issue for you. I have really inflexible shoulders, short little T-Rex arms, but it's still easy for me to reach back, grab my water, take a drink, and then put it back. This is probably one of the best features on a pack ever. In the side pockets, I'll keep things like tent steaks, tent poles, or a little snack like these Pringles. In the front hip belt pockets, I keep some pretty important things. In the right hand side, I keep my satellite communicator. This is the Garmin InReach Messenger. So if I get into trouble, I can use the SOS button to call for help. And then I can also use it to check in with loved ones back at home, as well as coordinate and communicate with other people that have inReaches. In the left hip belt pocket, I have another really important item and that's snacks. I usually have some bars or some cookies, different snacks to get me going throughout the day. But instead of using a ton of little Ziploc bags, I like to use these bumpkin bags. They're reusable, dishwasher safe, and I like to store things like cashews, almonds, or other nuts in here. With the 2023 version of the Flash 55, REI got away from the waterproof brain. I really like that feature on the old version. You could store things in here that you didn't want getting wet, so it was a really nice feature. But in here, I have my first aid kit with just kind of standard first aid kit stuff, and then a flex tail tiny pump. This is a really cool little device. You can use it to inflate your sleeping pad, as well it has a lantern on it. So I use this to stick up in a pocket of my tent, illuminate the tent, as well as put out if I'm just sitting around camp. It's a nice way to get light without having to use a headlamp. In the ditty bag, I keep a bunch of pretty essential items. I have a little thermometer, so I use this to keep track of the temperature throughout the day and at night. It's a good way to see how well your sleep system is keeping you warm throughout the night. I also have some lip chap in here. I have a little power bank, so this is a power bank that's really affordable. With this gear list, I not only wanted it to be comfortable on your body, but also comfortable on your wallet. And this is a 10,000 milliamp battery bank, really lightweight and then really affordable. I have my toothbrush in here. So this is just a little folding toothbrush. And then paired with that, I use toothpaste tabs. So I don't like those little travel toothpaste bottles. I find them really annoying. You never know how much you have left. But with toothpaste tabs, you can just take as many as you need for the trip. And it's a, just a nice, easy, convenient way while also still being really effective to brush your teeth. I have a little flashlight in here. So most of the time I'm using the lamp on the flex tail pump, but this is just a 14 gram Rovivon flashlight that if I do need to get up in the middle of the night to pee or just get some spot illumination, then I can use this. I also have earplugs. I like to sleep with earplugs because in the middle of the night there's a bunch of little sounds and a lot of the time I'll think a bear is trying to invade my camp or attack me when really it's just a squirrel or a mouse walking by my tent. In the front pocket of the pack, I have a lot of really important items as well. This is a Kula cloth that's part of my poop kit, but we'll get into that in a second here. For my poop kit bag, I keep it in this bumpkin poop mochi bag. And in here, I start off with a trowel. So this is to dig my cat hole. This is the Vargo Dig Dig Trowel. It's a super robust, effective trowel, but I also really like the Bogler trowel for being a little bit more lightweight while also still being effective. Once I'm done going number two, that's where the fun really begins. I don't use to toilet paper anymore. I use a backcountry bidet. I like to give a good initial spray to get off any really loose items. And then after that, I'll take my left hand, lather it up with some soap, and then get down there and give myself a good little bath. It's really effective at cleaning things up. And then afterwards, you can use a soap to wash your hands and then finish off with some hand sanitizer just to make sure that everything's nice and clean. The Kula cloth comes in for drying. So after using the soap and water, my butt is nice and clean, just like after having a shower. And then I use the Kula clean just like a towel to dry up. I also have my water filtration system in here. So I like to use the Platypus Quick Draw water filter. It's very quick, it's effective, and it has two watertight ends. So if it is getting down below freezing, you can just stick this in your sleeping bag or quilt and it's not gonna freeze overnight. I pair it with a CNOC water bladder. So it has a nice wide end at the top here in order to fill up water. And then you attach the filter to the narrow end and you can push water through it into your water bottle really easily. 
The last items that I keep in the front pocket are games. So if you're with other people or even by yourself, it's nice to have some games in order to pass the time at camp. This is backcountry bocce. So you throw a little white ball and you try and get the other balls as close to it as possible. I've played this with friends on trail and it's a lot of fun. If I'm with just one other person, then sometimes I'll bring cards or crib. That brings us to what I keep inside the pack. You can see that I already have my tent set up here, but normally that'd be right at the top just so that when I get to camp, I can get my tent set up right away. And then after that, I keep my food. So this is an, a Hilltop Packs food bag. In here, a lot of really cool items. I keep my cook kit. So this is the MSR wind burner cook kit. This is an all-in-one cook kit that boils water really fast. The wind burner uses some really cool technology, including a radiative burner in order to be really effective in wind and heat up the water really quickly. If I want a hot drink on trail or even just want some wine or something like that, then I bring this collapsible mug from Sea to Summit. It has some ridges on the side here in order to keep your hand from burning when you have hot water in there, but it's just nice to have a little mug and this one's collapsible and really lightweight, so it doesn't really take up much space in the pack. I also have my spoon for eating meals. This is a pink titanium spoon. It's one of the most comfortable spoons that you can ever use. It's super ergonomic and it kind of just makes food taste better. A lot of the time when I'm on trail, especially if I'm on a comfort trip, I just want things that are easy. So I'll bring freeze dried meals to eat for dinner. And then for breakfast, I make my own meals because there's not a lot of good breakfast options out there. So I'll bring oatmeal with some chocolate chips and fruit in it. And I put them in these Rusby bags. Rusby bags are also reusable dishwasher safe bags, but they have a curved bottom to them. So they're kind of like little bowls and they're just really nice for breakfast. These are the snack size ones, which are great for bowls of oatmeal, but they also have medium size ones, which you can use for for homemade dehydrated dinners. Then we have everything that I want to stay dry inside the pack. So in order to keep things dry, I don't use a pack cover, I use a pack liner. So this is a trash compactor bag. You can also use Nilo Flume pack liners if you want something a little bit more lightweight as well as clear. So I just take this, put everything I want dry inside of it, twist up the top, and then squeeze out all the air and then push it down the side. And it's a very effective way to keep your gear dry. I've used this kind of system in days of rain and had no problems. Right in the top here, I have some camp slippers. So these are really nice lightweight slippers that I use around camp. It's really nice at the end of the day to take off your hiking shoes and put your feet into something comfortable. But if these are too heavy for you, another option are the Mayfly sandals. So these are really lightweight, but still super comfortable and effective. You're not gonna be doing big long walks in these, but if you just want something just for around camp, then they're a really good option as well. I'll have links to the video description to all the gear we're talking about if you're interested in going and checking it out. After that, I have my clothing system. So right at the top here, I have my down jacket. This is the, the Decathlon Trek 100 down jacket. Really affordable, super warm, probably one of the best buys that you can get out there. And then I have my clothing system, just a bunch of different clothing, depending on the season, I'll bring different items in order to be comfortable out on trail. And then I have my sleep system. So I already have my sleeping pads set up in there, but then I have my sleeping insulation. And a lot of you might be thinking that if you're gonna be comfortable, you probably want a nice sleeping bag, but that's not the case. You want something else and we're gonna get into that right now. At the base of the sleep system, we have the sleeping pad. And for a long time, the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT has been the king for comfort when it comes to sleeping pads. But I've been testing out a whole bunch of new pads in 2023 here. And I've come to the conclusion that the REI Helix is the most comfortable sleeping pad out there now for a couple different reasons. First of all, it has the same sort of quilted baffling pattern that the Etherlite XT has. So it has these dimples and then grooves that really relieve pressure, especially if you're a side sleeper on your shoulder and your hip. I've never had any body parts fall asleep when sleeping on this pad, and I've slept through the night multiple times, which is not the case with most pads out there, and it's only really been the case with the Etherlite XT and the Big Agnes Q Core Deluxe. But what sets this pad apart from the Etherlite XT is its warmth. It has an R value of 4.9, so it's rated very highly, but R value isn't always the best indicator of real world performance. But with the Helix, I've tested it out a bunch already in really cold conditions. I've taken it down below freezing on cold ground and been very comfortable. It starts to hit its limit once you get onto frozen ground or snow, but in any other conditions, the Helix is gonna be plenty warm for you. For a long time, the Nemo Filo was the king of comfort pillows. But for this year, the Exped Mega Pillow has replaced it for me. And there's a couple different reasons for that. First of all, like the Philo, it has two loops on either side, so you can attach a piece of shot cord in order to attach the pillow to your pad. As you toss and turn in the night, if you don't have a pad strap, your pillow's probably just gonna fly away and you're gonna have to be chasing it over the course of the night. 
The other two things that I really like about it are that it's a very wide pillow. So it covers the entire width of a 25 inch wide sleeping pad, which is awesome. It's just like your pillow at home, but then coupled with that, it's very supportive. So it doesn't feel like you're laying on a balloon. So you can just toss and turn and never feel like you're running out of pillow space. It also has a really soft kind of cushioned top to it. So just an all around great pillow, but that width really brings a lot to the table. It's not the lightest pillow. If you want a light pillow that's still comfortable, check out the Trekology 2.0 pillow. And then the Nemo Feel, like I mentioned, is still a super comfortable pillow if you want a really thick foam topper. I don't really need that thick foam topper, but for some people it's gonna be essential for them. For insulation, I like to use a quilt instead of a sleeping bag for a few different reasons. First of all, with a sleeping bag, as I toss and turn, I find I get all tangled up in it. My face is facing into the hood and it's just not comfortable. With a quilt, you can toss and turn and you're not gonna get tangled up in it. And that's because it doesn't have a bottom to it and attaches to the sleeping pad with pad straps. A lot of people feel like they might get drafts with a quilt, but if you use the pad straps effectively, you're not gonna get drafts. I've used quilts down to below zero degrees Fahrenheit and be plenty comfortable. But what's really nice about the quilt, in addition to that tossing and turning factor, is its versatility. If it's really cold out, you can button it up at the top here, cinch it up so you're not getting any drafts around your neck, lock it onto the sleeping pad with those pad straps, and then be toasty warm. But if it warms up, you can unsnap everything, loosen it off, use it like a blanket, and you're not gonna overheat over the course of the night. I have three different recommendations for quilts for you. If you want a really affordable but quality one, then check out the Hammock Gear Econoboro. If you want a really high-end customizable quilt, then the Enlightened Equipment Enigma quilt or the Revelation are gonna be really good options for you. And then if you just want something that you can pick up at the store, then the REI Magma might be a good way to go as well. Before we talk about the tent, which is really kind of the linchpin of this entire ultra comfort system, we have to talk about a chair. If you're gonna be going on an ultra comfort backpacking trip, then you need a chair. This is the Helinox Chair Zero Highback. So while being a chair, it's still very lightweight at 690 grams. But what's nice about the highback relative to the original Chair Zero is that it has this higher back to it. So as you're sitting in it, you're getting a lot more support throughout your lower back, your middle back, and then around your shoulders. It also sits you a little bit more upright, which I kind of like. I find myself sitting more upright than I do lounging. But if you do need to lounge, you can still do that. But then the high back gives you a little bit of a headrest as well. So kind of win, win, win with this chair. It's not gonna be as light as the Chair Zero and it's also a little bit narrower. So if you're on the wider side, it's probably not gonna fit you. For the tent, we have the Cedar Summit Telos three-person tent. This tent has a lot going for it, a lot of things that people probably don't realize. First of all, it's a three-person tent, but it still weighs under two kilograms, which is phenomenal. You can fit two wide, 25-inch wide sleeping pads in here and still have tons of space. There's a lot of headroom due to the brow poles that kind of curve up. And these brow poles also make it really easy to get in and out. I lent this tent to my parents when we went on a trip last summer. They're not getting any younger, so being able to get in and out of a tent easily is a nice feature for them. The Telos also has a fast fly pitch mode, which is something that I want on all my tents moving forward. What that means is that you can pitch the fly first before pitching the inner and then come back and pitch the inner inside of the fly. This is a really nice feature if it's raining, you're not getting the inner all wet as you're trying to set up the tent. The Telos isn't the most storm worthy tent due to its kind of boxy nature, but it's gonna be able to handle light wind and rain no problem. If you wanna see some gear that I think is super underrated, go check out this video right up here. It's gear that no one is talking about and I'm not really sure why, it's kind of crazy. So go check that video, it's some really cool, awesome gear items and we'll see you later.